On the last episode of Create Consume Repeat, I showed you how to quickly set up the HyperDeck Studio HD+. But as you may have noticed, the user experience on that device leaves much to be desired. So let's fix that with macros. If you're new to the wonderful world of A10 macros, please pause this video and watch this episode first. It will give you a high level overview of what can be achieved via the ATEM software control panel's ability to record macros and show you how to do a little bit of light XML editing. Now, for those of you well-versed in the dark arts of macros, you already know that manually pulling off a seamless stinger transition during a live stream can be extremely difficult due to timing. But with a little help from the HyperDeck and the ATEM software control panel, pulling off an alpha keyed stinger transition can be effortless and more importantly, frame accurate every single time. So unlike previous episodes where I showed you how to create stinger transitions using OBS, this method is powered by the HyperDeck, which ensures frame accurate performance, which is extremely important when creating a perfectly timed stinger transition like this, where the window to cut between inputs is extremely slim. So this begs the question, why can't I continue to use OBS? Well, when using a software-based solution like OBS, you are at the mercy of the computer's workload, which can throw off your timing due to dropped frames. And let's be honest, timing during a live stream is extremely, extremely important. With that out of the way, let's start with a level one transition built and triggered from the ATEM software control panel with slight modifications for timing done in the XML editor of your choice. Now, in order to pull this off, we first need a video transition. And since this is not an After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna drop a link to this transition in the description section below. Once you've downloaded the video, please load it onto your HyperDeck Studio HD+. I suggest using a blank SD card to avoid any video format incompatibilities. With our video loaded, we can now open the ATEM software control panel and begin to create a macro. Step one, since I have the HyperDeck connected to input three and four, I will be transitioning between my main camera on input two and my PlayStation 5 on input one. So before I begin creating a macro, I need to ensure input two is selected in the program section and input one is selected in the preview section. Step two, select macros from the top menu and when the window opens up, select a blank spot and hit record. A dialog box should open, give your macro a name and hit okay. Step three, since I know many of you will be using picture in picture, let's create our transition on the downstream key. To do this, let's first turn on the downstream key, then head on over to the palettes tab and select the downstream key drawer. Select HDMI three as the fill source and HDMI four as the key source and ensure pre-multiplied key is selected. Step Four, please select the media player tab and open the HyperDeck drawer. From here, you will select our video from the list and hit play. Step five, we now need to place a delay by tapping add pause. A small window should pop up and in the second text box, please enter the number nine. But why nine, you ask? Well, when I created this transition, the flash that allows us to mask the cut between inputs happens on the ninth frame. Step six. At this point, we will want to activate cut from the transition style section and stop our macro from recording. Now, if we were to trigger the macro we just created, you would notice that the timing is off, which is a bummer since we know the exact frame the transition happens, which is frame nine. So what went wrong? Well, nothing. It's just the inevitable delay the ATEM incurs by switching inputs, loading files, and triggering transitions. Now, in order to remedy this, we will need to export our macro as an XML file. And to do this, we will select File, Save As. A window should pop up. Give the file a name before saving it to the desktop. This will prompt another window that may look scary, but don't fret. This collection of checkboxes allows us to select what we want to be included 
in our XML file. When exporting XML code with the purposes of editing your macros, I suggest only selecting the macros checkbox. This will allow you to better focus and make those edits without harming any of the other code. With our XML code exported, let's open it up in an XML editor. For me, that will be Dreamweaver, but feel free to use whatever software you're comfortable using. Now, I know that for some of you, this might look intimidating, but it is pretty easy as long as you know what you are looking for. And in our case, we are going to ignore all the other code and look to edit the pause by locating ID equals macro sleep, which is followed by frames equals nine. This number is what we want to change. Now, instead of guessing, the best way, in my opinion, is to record the transition using our ATEM's trusty record feature and playing back the transition frame by frame in the NLE of your choice. For me, that is Final Cut. And as you can see, our transition is four frames early. So let's change the nine frame delay to a 13 frame delay. With our XML edits done, we can now save this file and re-import it into the ATEM software control panel by selecting File, Restore, and locating the XML file. A dialog box should open up and just ensure macros is the only thing checked before hitting Restore. And just like that, we now have a slick transition that is not only cool, it is frame accurate. As you consider to refine and create your own transitions with this newly acquired knowledge, there is one extremely important thing you all need to keep in mind. The ATEM software control panel employs a clip index to activate a video clip on the Hyperdeck. So when you add a video or new transition, you may need to update the clip index for each and every macro. Two habits that will help you organize and prevent misfires are one, adhering to a solid file structure that employs numbers, and two, always adding files to the bottom of the list. Do not add files at the top or the middle. It will throw off the clip index completely. And with that, you are now a level one HyperDeck macro wizard. Questions? Comments? Let me know all about it in the comments section below. And as usual, smash that like, subscribe, and bell button. It helps me grow the channel and keeps you notified when I drop more live production goodness.